Shalom, we give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and Shalom to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe in sincerity and in truth for the edification of the house of Dawah Da. This is why we do these lessons. Shalom to you. Hope you're in good spirits. It's your brother Shema Ma from the DC camp. Hope you're in good spirits. Uh, let's just get straight to the scripture, uh, bring out the uh, title of the video through the lesson. Let's get the first scripture. This is uh, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, probably, you know, it's <laughs> Paul does a wonderful job to the Romans, um, probably one of his last uh, letters that he that he wrote. Um, but, you know, he was speaking to the Romans or to the um, Israelite foreigners that was in Rome, uh, thinking that, that, that they're Romans. But he had to set them straight um, and get the scripture straight uh, to bring them back to remembrance of who they truly are. I love the title of the of the chapter. It says "Deliverance from Bondage." Now, who was that? Who was in bondage? Paul, right, was under house arrest at this time, right, and the Israelites was under the Roman captivity, or what you would call oppression of the Romans. So, this deliverance and this letter was for Israel, or pertains to Israel. So let's get this and we're going to uh, get into the lesson. Hopefully it'll be edifying to you and to your spirit. Deliverance from bondage. We're going to go down to the um, ninth verse. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now, when you read up, you know, I don't want to read so much, but uh, Paul was talking about, um, you know, having this walk or this uh, life's walk, living as you, you know, what your flesh tells you to do uh, instead of your spirit. And he called it a carnal mind, just a fleshy mind. And it says it's death, right? But the spiritually mind in verse six is life and peace. And that life and peace is in Yahweh Shad, who the world calls Jesus. Uh, he is the deliverer. He is the savior. And that life and peace only comes through him. And this is, again, remember, this letter was written to the saints in Rome, the Israelites. Jumping down to the ninth verse. But we, or you, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And this is how we're supposed to walk. We're supposed to walk in the spirit, not just what our flesh tell us to do. Ooh, that looks good. Let me get that. Ooh, that feels good. Let me do that. No, you're supposed to think spiritually and every step you take, I mean, literally every step you take brick by brick, sidewalk, grass blade, whatever it may be, you have to walk in the spirit and the spirit speak to you on how you should walk. Oh, don't go there. Watch out for that. Yield. Turn around. Detour. You see? And people don't read signs. They just gonna blow past signs and 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 don't stop at red lights, don't go when they're supposed to go, and this causes problems in their life. You know, you know that you can't drink so much, right? So don't drink so much. I seen this guy at the liquor store last night. You know, stop at the liquor store, and he was already twisted. And he wanted to buy more liquor. Well, the guy, uh, you know, the clerk refused him. He said, get out, get out, get out. You've had enough. He didn't see the signs that he had enough because what his flesh is saying, I need more. You know, this is, you know, every day. That's just one example. Every day these things are happening in people's lives where they don't adhere to their spirit, right? It says here, if so, be that the spirit of the heavenly father dwell in you. Now, if any man 
have not the spirit of the anointed, he is none of his. If he's not walking Christ-like, if he's not walking Yahweh Shai-like, he's not listening to the spirit. The spirit may not be in him. There are people who walk spiritually, talking about God-like spirit, what the Bible teaches us how to walk, and there are people who just walk through instinct. Oh, my flesh says, oh, I need more. Oh, my flesh says, I got to do this. You see? If, and if, verse 10, and if Yahweh shall be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And this is what it gives. The spirit of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the heavenly father, in the name of Yahweh Shai, gives us life and righteousness to live righteous. And righteous is to be on the right path to the heavenly father, which pleases him. You see, and this is what we need to do, please him and not ourselves. Because our body is actually dead. It has it has no spiritual life in it without Yahweh Shai. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, right? The spirit of God, right? Or who the world called God. His name is Yahweh in the, in the ancient Hebrew. He that raises up Yahweh Shai from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit. By his spirit that dwell in you. So now your body, which was dead, right, now makes it alive through the spirit of Yahweh Shai in you. And this is what we need. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. You shall die. And we didn't walk. Uh, according to the spirit of Yahweh Shai, we live according to the spirit of what the world teaches us. The world teaches us is, oh, this is good. Oh, this is for you. You know, uh, what's the what's what's uh, the motto? Uh, just do it. Of Nike, right? Nike said, just do it. And this is what people are doing. Just doing it without accountability without responsibility, without even uh, uh, taking in consideration the actions that you take. It says here, verse uh, 13, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if, if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds, mortify means to die off or to kill, the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of the Heavenly Father. And this is what we need to be. This is our position in this life. This is where we need to be adopted by the Heavenly Father back again into His good grace. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That fear is bondage because we fear what the world uh, uh, teaches us that we seem to be against. You know, don't sleep with your neighbor's wife. Don't kill. Don't steal. But the world teaches us we need to do it by any means. We need to get what we like. We see it, we want it, we go get it. Well, that's not the spirit of the Heavenly Father. He provides us everything we need. So what more we need of the flesh when it's supposed to be dead to the things of the world? The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, the children of the Heavenly Father, because we move Christ-like. We move Yahweh Shai-like. What he say do, we do. What he say don't do, we don't do. Let's get this real quick. First uh, John 4. It says here, you, 
verse, uh, verse John 4 and 4, you are of the Heavenly Father, little children, and have overcome them. Them was, uh, uh, is the spirits that say to your flesh, oh, man, I feel good. Go ahead, do some more. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The world will tell you, man, yo, this is where it's at. They, right, those people, those spirits are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. Of course, like draw the like. So if you of the world, this is this is this is how guys fall out of the truth and go back into the world thinking that it's better there. When what we were doing was plowing a field to usher in our big brother Yahweh Shine into the world so righteousness could dwell. But you want to go back into the world and be lazy spiritually minded and not even want him to come because your deeds are evil and you want to continue doing those evil works in your flesh. The world <laughs> the world speaks to the world. This is what you hear. And the world heareth them. So it's a communication of wicked spirits that are in the world and you gravitate to this evil thing because you don't walk with Yahweh Shai. The spirit of Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, is not even in you. So where else are you going to go? We are of Yahweh. He and that Yahweh is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? Because it's in tandem. He that know if Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh heareth us and gravitate to us. He that is not of Yahweh heareth not us. It's like, what are you saying? I don't understand. It's not making sense. That's not logical. Of course it's not. Because you can't hear the Heavenly Father. You see? Whereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It's either one or the other. Can't be both. You see that? Over and over again, day after day, year after year, century after century, people are walking in error because they can't hear what the spirit of truth says to them. It's like it's blocked. You see? So going back to Romans 8, and we're going to read... Uh, 14, for many, for as many, this is Romans 8 and 14, for as many are as led by the Spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of the Heavenly Father. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Heavenly Father. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, by Hashem Shai and joint as with the anointed Yahweh Shai. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. When he's glorified, we're glorified. And this is the point of the lesson. For I have reckoned that sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And this is this is that flesh speaking to you and saying, oh, man, that shit hurt. It hurts that the world, oh, I can't receive the things that I think I deserve. Well, you don't deserve anything but what the Heavenly Father wants to give you. You see? So it's it shouldn't be a groaning. It's a good thing sometimes, most of the time, that you don't receive all the things that you want. Because it'll take away from needing Yahweh Shai, needing them, 
This is the hope and this is part of the faith in growing and moving about. If you get everything, if a child get everything, you know, he deserve, uh, not deserve, but if he give, if he get everything that he want, what is the need for, for wanting things? He just get everything he want. There's no need. We need to be relieved from bondage. But if we have everything, there is no hold on us. We get everything we want. We do every, do all that we please. This is your your entertainers and your and your so called preachers. You see what's happening to them. They being exposed for doing everything in the flesh that they want to be in their flesh. They desires, they wants, and it's all wickedness, and it's being exposed. This is what you're seeing. You see an exposure, right? You're seeing the exposure of people's wants and needs, what they truly want. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creature, the creation, is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. That's what, man, let's look it up. This is what manifestation is. And this is the, the point of the lesson. That people are seeing, not only expecting, but they are actually seeing the manifestation of the sons of the Heavenly Father. Manifestation, lying bare, making naked, all these things that used to be hidden in secret are now coming to light. People are now seeing these things. Now, not only the wicked things, but really the truth too. And that's the most important thing, that the truth is now being revealed. A disclosure of truth instruction concerning things before unknown, like how to walk with Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father, how to please him. We was always in the mind frame of pleasing our flesh pleasing ourselves. Manifestation, apocalypsis, right? Apocalypsis in the Greek. Apocalypsis, like you get the apocrypha, right? Hidden things, but now made to be seen, right? It says, things, uh, use of events by which things or states or persons hereto, hitherto, withdrawn from view, are made visible to all. This is why you're seeing what you're seeing in the entertainment, right? This is what you're seeing in uh, the church world. You're seeing this in the so-called um, uh, apologistic world, that all of these things was made to keep us blind to keep us blinded by wickedness by by showing us right no that's not it it's this which is the opposite of the truth let's get this word right here apocalypsis um it's uh it's g603 let's see if i could pull it up G603. I don't know if I could do it on this. Usually could do it on a, on a computer. But let's see. To uncover, lay open what has been veiled or covered up. To make known, make manifest, disclose what before was unknown. That's, that's really it. 603. Uh, 603 talks about withdrawn from view are made visible to all the appearance or disclosure of truth so i looked up the edamon about manifest yeah always happen when i want to do something things never go right so let's look it up
manifest. No, I looked it up. Clearly revealed to the eye or understanding, open to view or comprehension. It said evidence palpable, 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 apprehensive, plainly apprehensive, clear, apparent, evident. Proved by direct evidence, and this is the truth, this word, this walk, is clearly shown by evidence, and this is what's needed, evidence. Let's look up this word evidence, not word evidence, but this next scripture about what was put down on paper as our evidence on how to walk with Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. This is Acts 3 and 17. It says, And now, brethren, I walk that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. What? Teach false false ways. We could read up, right? What 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 did we it says here verse 15, we kill the prince of life, or at least thought we did. You see? And that's evidence. Man was put to death for our sins, but he was life. But Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, raised him back up like he said he would, that he knew he would, for the elect, the ones who do, and the, and the ones who do clearly see the whole picture. And that's what people don't see. They see part of the picture. Basically, self-rule. Make themselves a god or a power. By doing what they please. These guys are big icons in the world. It says here, verse 17, I wot not that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which Yahweh before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Yahweh Shai should suffer, he have so fulfilled. This is what he came to do. He came to fulfill everything that was spoken about him by the prophets and the Psalms concerning him. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of Yahweh, this time of refreshing is now. This is what we see. We see in the relief from bondage first through our spirit and then is going to come in our flesh. Where the tables is going to be turned, right? And where they, right, is going to be punished for the things that they've done. All those. And he shall send Yahweh HaMashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things. That restitution is right now. He's really restoring. Let's look up this word, restitution. He's really restoring the things right now. 605, and that same uh, area of apocalypse, apocalypse thesis. Let's hear the let's hear the man say it. If I get it, don't look like it. Oh, here it is. Strong's G six oh five, apocatastasis, apocatastasis. The restoration of a true theocracy. This is the true war of of the perfect state. Before the fall, who fell? Israel fell. But now it's coming back. The theocracy is the study of God. The study of the power. The true study of the power. Not what these preachers are talking. Not what the world is speaking of. That's not God-like. That's world. That's what man thinks. And we're not going there. We're coming back to the true sense of what Yahweh Shemiah Shai want from us. 
and how to live, how to get that life that we crave, how to receive uh, uh, restitution from the bondage and the slavery and oppression, even in our bodies, you see? Not only our mind, but in our bodies also. The time of refreshing is now. This is the manifestation. This is what he said he come to do. For Moses truly said, verse 22, Unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord Yahweh, your power, rise up, raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. It shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Like if I tell a person, you're not supposed to have a Christmas tree in your house. This is what the prophet is, uh, is saying. And you go against whom you say you love. Well, you will be, be, you have to be destroyed because of that. You go against your father. Father dishes out punishment and discipline. You can't just do what you say. Oh, well, you know, I do it for the kids. No, you're doing it for yourself. And you're putting your kids in subjection to Satan, to the evil spirits. That's of the world. So when the, when the child grow up, right, train up a child in the way she go and they wish and never depart from it. So when you train a child up in wickedness, guess what he going to give to his children? Is he really going to sway away from what you promoted so heavy? He going to do or she going to do the same old things. Same old things. And this is where we at today. Living in the spirit of bondage. Nothing frees us. Right? Of the spirit of bondage or the spirit of evil. The spirit of wrongdoing. None of that frees us. That keeps us in chains. In our spirit and our mind and body. Don't eat pork. Ah, if you cook it right, it'll be okay. But then when your ankles is, is, is bigger than your thighs... Then you're going to say, you know what? I should have listened. Over and over again. You, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. This is what all the prophets was talking about. They was trying to manifest to you, to show you how you should be. And not only how, how you should be, how to see this prophet, Yahweh Shai, come to us and shown us and always been there for us. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which Yahweh made with your fathers or our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. That's us. That's not the other nations. He never gave the other nations, that type blessing. That type blessing was Yahweh Shai, the giver of life. He didn't give the other nations or the other uh, people of the world Yahweh Shai. He made that promise to us, the children of Israel. Moses spoke it. You see? It says, unto you, unto you first, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, having raised up his son, Yahweh Shai, sent him to bless you. It should have said, bless the world, if, it, if Yahweh Shai was for the world. No, he came to bless us in turning away every one of you from his iniquities or sins. He didn't say that for the world. He didn't do that for them. More. He did that for us. This is that refreshing, to recover from the effects of heat, right? G404, the refreshing is to recover from the effects of heat, which is wickedness, right? Let's get this, Isaiah 1, it's not that difficult. Isaiah 1, 
we're going to start at 21. It says here, Zion is corrupted to be redeemed. That's what I just said. Restore, right, to the former state. Yeah, Zion, which is a, is a cold word for Israel, was corrupted by the world, by the things they saw, thought those were better than what we were living, but will be redeemed. It says, how is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and follow after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither do the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith Yahweh, Yahweh of hosts, Tazabawah, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of my enemies, and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tent, and I will restore thy judges as at the first. He didn't say the other nations he was going to do this to. He said Israel. And thy counselors at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together destruction and they that forsake Yahweh shall be consumed if you don't hear that prophet you will be destroyed the prophet spoke Jeremiah talked about Christmas Isaiah talked about uh, uh, the enemy coming in all the way to Revelation over and over again you've been told and, and shown For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which you have desired and shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. For you shall be as an oak whose leaf faded and as a, gar as a garden that with no water you will be shriveled up. And the strong shall be as a toe and the maker of it as a spark and they shall be both burn together and none shall quench them. You're going to be shriveled up, burnt, and destroyed. Over and over again, it's been told to you. What happened? Romans 11. Book of Romans. What happened? Romans 11, 25 says, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. What happened? What, what, what's going on? These should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel. Blindness in part. That means part of Israel, see, part of Israel is blinded. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Those Israelite foreigners that we're speaking of, that Paul was speaking of or went to, right? Start with Cornelius, right? Through Peter. And Paul going out to the Gentiles, the Thessalonians, uh, the Colossians, the Ephesians, the Galatians. When these Gentiles started coming in by the groves, where the Lord had put in their minds and stirred up their mind back into who they are, right? This is that fullness that's starting to blossom, starting to take root. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Need we say more? Need we 
to go on and on. So now we, if, if, if ungodliness is being taken away from Israel, now we got to figure out who is doing this and why is he doing it for us? Why, why, why me? Why us? Because it was prophesied, it was told to you. So now we got to go back into the records and check, just like Cyrus did and Darius did, even uh, uh, Artaxerxes did. They went back to the written records of their nation to figure out or to see what was told in the past. Why don't Israel do this? So what the devil do or what Satan do is say, now nah, all of the records are done away with. Yeah, after you have corrupted the world, you're going to now say, let's start from this point on. No, you have to go back to the records and figure out what went on. For this is my covenant unto them, Israel, Jacob, when I should take away their sins. And as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election... Right, the elect, the chosen, they are beloved for thy father's sake. These Gentiles who have come in and grows, woken up to Yahweh Shai, now understand the whole purpose and the whole mission. Their eyes is now open instead of sleep or closed. For the gift, for the gifts and the calling of Yahweh are without repentance. For as Ye in times past have not believed, Yahweh, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Talking to us Gentiles. We're talking to the Gentiles. Now you understand. Now it's been made manifest because the circumcision, the ones who say they Israel, knew they were Israel, didn't believe it. But now you believe it and you're Israelite. This is what it's all about. This is the refreshing. Wow. He made a way for us to come back. He made Israel now see and come back to the Heavenly Father, understanding that blindness has happened to Israel, but the awakening happened to Israel all at the same time. For Yahweh have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all of Israel. Not all of the world because they never fell off from Yahweh. They never turned away from God's uh, commandments and judgments. The world didn't do that. They wasn't in that position. Oh, the depths and the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. I would have never figured that out. How he did it, how he made this happen. He's the orchestrator of the greatest story ever told. This is the greatest story ever told. It says, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past and find out. For who have known the mind of Yahweh, or who have, who have been his counselor, or who have first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. All to our call Yahweh, call Halalyam, Yah Bashim Yam Shah, Bashim Rakakadash. For that, he made it a way to happen. Who, who would think of that? This will, this plan, this uh, walk, all the things he had done, who could figure that out? So much more uh, that we could say 
but we don't want to say too much all at once. You know, there's there's more lessons to be, uh, more lessons to come of the manifestation of Yahweh Hashem Shai, who the true uh, elect is, the, the true children of the Heavenly Father. On and on, man. And we're going to continue. I don't want to write this out. Lord willing that we continue doing these lessons for the edification of the house of Dawah Dawah, the house of David, to reveal who Yahweh Shai is and what Yahweh has done for us to bring us back into good grace, to be, um, you know, the, 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 to show us the true sacrifice of the children of Israel. The true track sacrifice, because we were sacrificing to every and every, uh, every little thing and everything, trying to find happiness, but it never manifests itself. The true manifestation is Yahweh Shai, and we're gonna continue. I don't want raptures out to the end. Uh, we're gonna give all praise to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.